Next up, we have Mark Mazzetti. And uh, his 3MT is Soundwalk, a prescription for managing anxiety in clinical settings. From the School of Interactive Arts and Technology, with your supervisor, his supervisor, Dr. Diane Romano. Uh, according to the Center of Disease Control, approximately 130 million people in North America have some form of chronic illness. Uh, chronic pain is considered to be persistent pain that lasts longer than six months. And chronic pain patients typically are in a more hypersensitive state than we are. Um, now imagine having to make a visit to your doctor and having to wait for 40 minutes or up to four hours if it's in a hospital. Um, a, a, an approach for uh, finding a way to help reduce anxiety waiting in clinical settings can be very challenging. In fact, it could be very costly as well. In addition, research has shown that this additional anxiety that's added can impede communication between doctor and patient, which can directly impact health outcomes. My research involves a new approach, an interdisciplinary approach, to help reduce anxiety using sound walks. Sound walks are framed exercises in actively listening to an environment. Now imagine we could create a perceptual change in the environment as we're waiting to see the doctor. So what I've done is I have developed a series of user studies to address this problem. So for example, the first study which was conducted at the Vancouver Arthritis Research Center, we, which was broken down into three stages. We first looked in terms of how much anxiety patients experience when they wait. Then we had a listening phase. The listening phase uh, consisted of randomized recordings of sound walks. So these sound walks were, because we were not sure in terms of which environment is optimal, uh, I recorded sound walks in different locations in a park, urban environment, and also we created a control group which was a soundscape composition that was based on sounds from a hospital. And so patients would listen to these randomized uh, recordings and then afterwards they would complete a post questionnaire to understand if there was any change in anxiety levels experience. We also looked at uh, understanding the affective experience of listening to these recordings by asking questions in terms of if they had any, uh, if they visualized any images as they listened to these recordings, if they had any physical sensations. In addition, uh, the doctors also completed a questionnaire in terms of understanding um, their communication with their patient, if how, how, how relaxed the patients were, during the conversation, and if they were able to communicate their symptoms clearly. By the way, the doctors were not aware as to which recording they listened to. The results were amazing. 70% of the patients had a reduction in anxiety after listening to the recordings. Most of the uh, reduction was listening to the sounds of the natural soundscape. I plan to conduct further studies at St. Paul's Hospital and at Lupus Clinic in downtown. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. So, uh, are there any questions for Mark while the judges take the yeah. Yes. Oh, two mm -hmm. questions. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was wondering, uh, does the sound walk, is there, is there some kind of, uh, just because I've never listened from before, is there a kind of narrative element? Like here, I'm Mark going, you know, all on the North Shore and Exactly. Uh, there is a narrative quality to it. So actually, I experienced a lot of challenges in terms of recording sound walks. Uh, the reason is these recordings were done using binaural microphones to create a three-dimensional feeling of listening to these environments. One of the challenges is uh, not to create ear fatigue and also cause any kind of sensation in terms of feeling headaches uh, or feeling dizzy because you don't want to be moving your head around as you're recording. These microphones are placed on your ears as you're walking down a path. The, t the way that we recorded these um, sound, sound walks were based on as if you were composing music. We had a start point, then there would be a point of interest, and then a return to home, which is similar to the beginning of the composition. However, it's slightly different, so it reveals something new. Um, and because this is the first time doing such an experiment, we weren't sure what environment works best, so that's why we recorded uh, sound walks in parks, at Granville Island Market, in downtown Vancouver as well. But uh, we found that the park recordings uh, were the best in terms of feeling relaxed, less tension, and actually experiencing more images as well. And the binaural recordings themselves really help in terms of immersing patients 
in the environment. So, Miles? Um, well, I just had a, a comment uh, more than anything. Okay. Um, like in their clinical settings, like hospitals, for example, yeah. the great at St. Paul's, uh, my, uh, my brother in law is a, um, a resident there, and uh, he often uh, he talks about the, his respirologist. He likes the sound of uh, people wheezing and the mm -hmm. gurgling sound of lungs. Um, so, like, their experience is very, very different. So, I was just uh, you know, as a point of interest more than anything else, uh, like you talk to the doctors and uh, other people that are in the patient care facilities about you know, what kind of sounds they like? Well, that, that's what the post questionnaire was about, right? So we wanted to find out what sounds they found pleasing, what sounds they found to be agitating, and also if, if they were given carte blanche in terms of they wanted to record something, what kind of sounds would they want to? have in the recordings. And so we were able to gather a lot of interesting information in terms of refining our recordings. And that's why I'm actually testing this at a lupus clinic and at St. Paul's Hospital to compare environments as well to see if we get the same consistency in results uh, from our first uh, set of data. So, Any further questions? Awesome. Thanks, Mark.